you guys. Hey guys, it's time for guess what? Another video on Girl Defined. And I decided that now I'm gonna wait until marriage and we'll talk about that later. A couple of days ago, I tweeted out asking people to reply to me with video links of Christian cringe since I love doing videos on Christian cringe and I got so many Girl Defined videos that I just picked my favorite two and we are reacting to those today. But before I get started, I do wanna send a quick thank you shout out to adamandeve.com. They are so amazing to be supporting my channel and what an appropriate video to promote them on because we're talking about waiting for sex and waiting to kiss until marriage. So let's talk about some vibrators. If you go to adamandeve.com and use my name at checkout, J-A-C-L-Y-N as the code, you get 50 50% off any one item and free shipping, which is an amazing deal. I have a video on my second YouTube channel, by the way, subscribe if you haven't, youtube.com slash Jacqueline Vlogs, where I did an unboxing of all the really cool stuff they sent me, a lot of Christmas themed lingerie and fun things. So I suggest you check it out, link in the description. I was raised very religious and not only was I religious, I was raised Catholic. And with that comes a lot of guilt, guilt about doing anything at all. That's fun. So I grew up with the idea and this feeling that anything sexually related is shameful and you should be like afraid of your own body kind of thing, which is a really harmful way to grow up. And that brings me to Girl Defined. Let's go. First video that someone tweeted at me was this. Thank you so much, Laura. Please revisit the gold mine that is Girl Defined. Why I waited until marriage to kiss. Huh, this is gonna be good. And today we are going to be talking about why I saved my first kiss for marriage. I actually, yes, I have not kissed Dave. We are saving our first kiss for when we are husband and wife. Imagine your first kiss ever being in front of your family and friends. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but that sounds horrible. I did not expect this road to last as long as it 30 has. 30 years? So 30 years? Was that a little passive aggressive? Like, <laughs> it took you 30 years to find a man to marry you. 30 has. years? So when I decided like, hey, that would be a cool idea. And then, you know, each year like, I, yeah, this is a cool idea, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's actually really stupid. I think it's really cool that you and Dave are doing that. And you do get a lot of questions about that. And I know I got a lot of questions about it because Zach and I did the same thing. And now we've been married for seven years. And so we have literally been enjoying kissing and having so much fun intimacy wise. We've literally been having so much fun, so much fun, just like kissing and intimacy wising things. Cause I can't say the word sex because you know, that's embarrassing and shameful, feel shame. Kissing and having so much fun intimacy wise. Just say sex, just say having sex. For over seven years, it has been awesome. But before I was married, I remember really thinking through and processing yeah. this and Zach and I even had some conversations like, are we gonna kiss? Are we not gonna kiss? And I'm sorry, this just seems really stupid for two adults. Like what, what are these girls like? late 20s and they're sitting around with their significant other being like, I don't know, like, should we kiss? Like, oh, that's so crazy. I, I just can't imagine adults doing that. To preserve all forms of intimacy, like physical intimacy yeah. for marriage. I'm sorry, I, I can't, I can't stop focusing. That one girl has this, like her hair like this, right? It's supposed to be like this, but there's just this one piece. I, I know I'm so OCD for pointing this out. One piece, it's like sitting like this. I just, I just want to reach through the screen the entire time and be like, eh, just fix it. And then on that wedding day and beyond, like just have at it and have so much fun. Just go at it. Yeah. Patience and really wanting to get to know me and my personality and who I am. Not, not just your keep, body. <laughs> not just my body, wanting to keep Christ at the center. Yeah, girl, I bet you wanted to keep Christ at the center. Uh, on a serious note, I really don't like this because they're, they're kind of implying that if you do have sex in a relationship, that the meaningfulness of it isn't there, that you can't also have uh, you know, a connection with someone that's mental, that, that goes beyond the physical. As though physical intimacy invalidates the meaningfulness of your relationship, which I actually think it's the opposite. Like I can't imagine fully falling in love with someone or fully connecting with someone without that. I feel like it's as important as a mental connection. You have to have mental and physical, otherwise you're just friends. And how do you not figure that out until marriage? How bad would it suck to marry someone and then realize that there's no physical chemistry? I mean, this is why marriages end all of the time. I think it'd be smart to figure that out before you get married. This is really terrible advice. 
This is terrible advice. To be honest, it's not as hard as it seems. Yeah. It's very but freeing, I've heard you say. Yes, it's very freeing because you're not like always like, oh, did we go too far? Did we do this? Like right. we're free. Or you could just feel free to go ahead and do all of those things because that's what people do when they're trying to figure out if someone's a suitable partner. Avoiding something entirely isn't freeing you from that thing. You're just running from it. Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you can go about things in a healthy and smart way, then there is something very freeing about that and you can really truly connect with someone on a deeper level. I mean, there's chemistry behind this, guys. There's pheromones, there's all different kinds of ways that your brain chemistry changes after you physically connect with a person and it makes you fall more in love with them. And yes, there's a difference between love and infatuation and we will get to that later, but I do think that it is a really, really integral part of fully connecting with someone. Be willing to be radical because there are other Christian young men out there who are willing to do the same. Whoa! That is one of the most ridiculous, I mean, and I've made videos on them, but this right here is one of the most ridiculous quotes I've ever heard. Be willing to be radical. We're, we're you know, advocating for radicalism right now. Be willing to be radical because there's other guys out there that'll do the same thing with you. Great. Ugh, so frustrating. All right, the next video that someone sent me here, what is it? We've got, can't go wrong with good old girl to find. Thank you so much. It's Dre, honey. I appreciate the video link. Reclaiming God's design for love, marriage, and sex. <sighs> oh, just the title. Reclaiming God's design for love, marriage, and sex. Yeah, this is definitely gonna be good. I can't wait to hear what they think God has to say about love, marriage, and sex. All right, so the girl on the right is married. The girl on the left, at the time they recorded this, wasn't married, I'm assuming is, is still a virgin. I don't know, she could have done whatever, I don't know, but she's claiming to be a virgin, at least, on the internet, but she's making a video talking about sex advice, so that's great. God is actually the designer of love, marriage, and sex. So even despite sex? Despite pop, even <laughs> sex? <laughs> even sex? What's that? God is actually the good mm. designer of marriage, of love and of sexual intimacy. Well, she doesn't know what it is, but she's interested because she was moaning throughout that explanation. Good mm. designer. Mm. <laughs> He's the one who brought these things into existence. Wow. wow, I didn't know that. The image of God, he created him what? Male and female. No, no, are we about ready to get homophobic? I feel like we're about ready to get homophobic. See, this is what I was talking about. We'll see, I'm not sure, we're not through the video yet, but I don't feel bad making fun of these girls because they're horrible. So first we wanna unpack love defined by God. Not love defined by the culture, not love defined by our personal opinion, but love defined by God. Yeah, this is definitely heading in a homophobic direction. Like, it's not what people think in society, it's not about the culture, it's about what God says, okay? I'm not the one that's homophobic. I'm just listening to God, it's not me. It's God. Most of the time, love defined by ourselves or love defined by pop culture is based on really one thing. It's kind of based on the feelings. <laughs> wow, my mind is blown. I never knew that love was based on feelings. Feelings and emotions. If you feel like you love someone, then you must mm -hmm. really love them. If you feel like you your feelings have left you and now you don't love this person, oh, you must not love them anymore. That is the dumbest shit I have ever heard. Yes, of course love is a feeling but it encompasses a lot more. Like that feeling will drive you to behave in a certain way and do certain things that are selfless for another person because you love them. We're not talking about like a TV show, like, oh my God, I love that TV show, but <laughs> the season was boring, don't love it anymore. We're talking about human interactions and emotions. That is not realistic. Yes, some people might behave that way and say that they love someone, but then act a different way. But in my opinion, that just means that they didn't really love that person. You have to follow it up with actions, otherwise it's meaningless. It's a very fickle type of love. It comes, it goes, and it's really unstable and uncertain and honestly that kind of love makes me feel very insecure. Of course it makes you feel insecure because it's not an actual type of love. You can't say that it's a type of love. You can't make that a category. That's shitty. Mm -hmm. Because okay one one moment Kristen might feel like she loves me today. Oh oh great but now no I, I upset her and now she doesn't love me anymore. Oh great I better watch out. This is just so fucking stupid. But it is kind of funny how the girl on the right is like ah, that's true some days I don't love you. <laughs> that's right. Love defined by God is not based on feelings but rather on action. That's what I just said. 
And it's not about God. That's like the normal definition that almost anybody would give of love. You can't just say something and not follow it up with actions. I don't know anybody who would be like, yeah, it's fine to just feel it, but never do anything to prove it or never do anything that actually stands behind the words you say. Yeah, that's fine. Everyone knows you have to back that up with actions. And this is not defined by God. This is defined by logic, defined by any normal person with an adult understanding of what love really means. God is the most incredible example of true yeah. love that we have in this world. <clears throat> this is what the Lord Almighty says. Now go and strike Amalek and devote to destruction all that they have. Do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. But no, by all means, God is the most incredible example of love that there is. And on that note, you two women should probably listen to this next verse. I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, she must be silent. So shh. Next, we're gonna talk about marriage defined by God. This topic is probably one of the most controversial oh, yeah. in our day and age because- They're gonna do it. They're gonna get homophobic at any moment, I can tell. Marriage has become this thing where however we feel, whatever we think about it, we can just define it according to that description. Just say it. Just, just say the man and woman thing. I know you're getting to that point. I know you are. You're like, it's kind of controversial. Society just thinks they can say whatever they want, but like God says gay people are bad. A lot of things that honestly aren't exactly politically correct. It's not very popular right is, now. <laughs> this is, it's not very popular to say gay people are bad, but like they are. We see him creating marriage to be between a man and a woman, one man, one woman. Mm. And there we have it. They finally said it. It's just one man and one woman. There we go. We got the homophobia out there. But oh my God, Jacqueline, why are you being so mean to them? They don't deserve it. And the last thing we want to talk about is sex defined by God. He knows what's best for us in this area. And he has a good plan. God, they're so smug when they talk. Did you see that? Whenever she said that, she like turned and looked at the other girl and she's like, like, oh, the shit I just said was fucking brilliant. We want you to say, you know what? I'm not wise enough to know these things yeah. in and of myself. And besides, my opinion might change next year anyways. How is that stable? We want you to say that I'm not wise enough to know these things in and of myself. You are not smart enough to figure these things in life out on your own. You need someone to tell you how to feel, how to think, and how to believe. You're not wise enough to do it on your own. We want you to say, you know what? I'm not wise enough to know these things. I mean, your opinion might change one day because you know, sometimes people learn new information or gather new life experiences and grow from that and their mind changes until one day they actually figure out for themselves what's important, but we don't want you to do that. We just want you to listen to what God says. Don't think, thinking, thinking is bad, thinking bad. Oh, I know, I think I nailed it. Yeah, you nailed it. You didn't get nailed, but you nailed it. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna have nightmares forever about that laugh. Oh, uh, sex bad, Jesus good. On that note, Thank you again to Adam and Eve for sponsoring this video. Most appropriate sponsor I could have possibly had for this video. You guys are amazing. Go to adamandeve.com, check it out. Use my code, Jacqueline, J-A-C-L-Y-N, 50% off any one item and free shipping, which is a sweet deal. So check it out. Let me know what you think. Like this video if you liked it. Share it everywhere. All my social media links are in the description below. And make sure to watch that unboxing video, also linked below. God bless, and I'll see you next time.